Welcome in, everyone, and thank you for listening to the 252nd ever episode of the Missouri Sports Podcast, brought to you by 106 Apparel and recording from the MSP studio in beautiful Springfield, Missouri. I'm one of your hosts, Cameron Albert, alongside my good friend and fellow Mizzou fan, Kyle DeVries. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing great, Cameron. I thought we were going to touch. We almost did. There we go. (laughs) Can I tell you something? Yeah, go ahead. Missouri plays football next month. Wow. It is July. They play in August. What's the date of the first game? August 31st, I think. Are we going to play on Thursday from now on? I don't know. I wouldn't mind it. That's two years in a row, though. Yeah. Keep it going, I say. Yeah. Um, what have you been up to? Um, work. Okay. Is a thing I do. Uh, still, Most days? Yeah. Still yeah. working on my MBA. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm about five weeks away from uh, having a son. Not me, personally. My wife will be giving birth to a son. It's a group effort. In about five weeks, so getting ready for that. Very exciting. So have all these things culminating at once, Mm. but it's good. Yeah. You're going to be, you'll be wiser due to your education just in time. That's true. Pass that knowledge down. That's true. None of that knowledge has hit me yet. It has to, I have to graduate. Exactly. And then that's when I'm like, they, that's when they unlock it it for you basically. Uh, yeah, well that's all very exciting. Um, it was a very exciting last few days for Mizzou football recruiting. We have a lot to talk about there, and uh, that's pretty much all we're going to talk about this whole episode. So strap in for that. Um, Before we get into that, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube, leave us a review wherever you listen to us, and of course you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Missouri Sports Pod. It was kind of uh, inconvenient. It was annoying, a little annoying trying to keep track of Mizzou football recruiting on Twitter over the holiday because I got rate limited. All of a sudden, my feed wouldn't refresh. And to tell you how addicted I am to Twitter, not being able to refresh my feed made me feel like my internet was down. Mm. Like that, it kind of like triggered this. You were trapped. Yes, it triggered this feeling in my brain where I like, it tricked me into thinking that like Discord wouldn't work and uh, like YouTube wouldn't work until I just reassured myself everything's fine. It's Twitter that's falling apart, not my internet. Yeah. Usually, and so of course I'm an idiot. So I get this thing that says rate limit exceeded. So I immediately search that in Twitter <laughs> thinking like, oh, let's see what people are saying about this. Yeah. And no, that didn't work. Yeah. Uh, people have been posting like, links like twitter links to discord and stuff and i just i won't even click it i don't want to use up a tweet exactly uh luckily though that seems to be behind us i used twitter like my normal addicted self yeah today and yeah. i didn't have any trouble good that's but cool. i was burning through 600 tweets in about five minutes yeah they, there's no way they could they could keep that up but i will say with all of twitter's just it seems like it's changing daily it might not even exist a couple of months from now. So uh, now's a good time to jump in the Discord, uh, MSP Discord. And, you know, if you like following along with uh, the, the game on Twitter or something like that, mm-hmm. who knows if you'll be able to do that two months from now. So just hop in the Discord and talk about the game with us. If you get limited on Twitter during a Mizzou football game, that's, that's you'll awful. use up your 600 tweets and oh, yeah. a few plays. That's true. <laughs> that's actually true. Uh, Mizzou Twitter would be going crazy. Yeah. That first first drive of the game. <laughs> One like final score post with like Conzos <laughs> under it. There's six hundred Conzos posted in That's a true. final score tweet. Literally. In about five minutes. Yeah, you will look at one tweet in the replies and he'll be done for the day. Exactly. Unless you have a blue check mark. Yeah. Which not gonna be me. So <laughs> um yeah, no, that's a great that's a good point. If you subscribe to Patreon, you get access to the Discord. That's where we're chatting about the game. Uh, just recently, somebody messaged in the game chat channel and said, I miss this place or something like that. Yeah, it's true. We're ready to be back there. We're, we, we're, we're going crazy in there during the games. But uh, yeah, Twitter was popping off with uh, football recruiting. Um, I do have a little bit of basketball stuff to get to before that. Also, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, we're doing our, 
uh, staggered vacations and weeks off. So I'm going to be out of town next week. So we are pre-recording some content on Friday to publish next week. We're going to hopefully not too much happens, uh, breaking news wise. Um, so this recording and publishing schedule is going to be a little off, uh, for a couple more weeks, but better now than when the season starts, I say. That's true. Uh, but if you want, we are going to, between now and Friday, we are going to watch Uncut Diamonds, the mini series Mizzou behind the scenes camp YouTube series that the Mizzou Athletics posted and give our thoughts on that. See if there's anything interesting to talk about on there. We might watch all 50 minutes of it and realize there's not much to talk about. So uh, next week's episode might, episode. Be, might be interesting. We'll see. We might have to just uh, riff on it for a little bit. But if you haven't watched that, watch that so you know what we're talking about. On YouTube. On Mizzou YouTube. Athletics. Yes. Free content for us, hopefully. Not Uncut, uncut Gems. No, that's a movie. You can watch that if you want. And we'll, we won't review we won't, it. We won't talk about if, it. If uh, when we get a thousand subscribers on YouTube, we'll review the movie Uncut Gems. <laughs> <laughs> like five years. Have from you seen now. it already? I have seen it. Yeah. Okay, wow, you, your work is. I'm done. not going to say a word about it because we got to get to it. Yeah, you better a, not. A thousand subscribers before I say anything. That's true. Uh, okay, actual news. We talked about recently. John Bowl, seven footer. He committed to Florida Gators. Worst place ever. Um, I made a birthday wish that he would commit to Mizzou. He didn't and committed to Florida instead. Worst case scenario. However, he's decommitted from Florida. You know, Cameron, there's a little bit of, you know, that your birthday wish, that, that aspect of it that I didn't think about. Yeah. And that's, it doesn't die. True. It doesn't, it didn't just die when John Bull committed to Florida. It felt like it a little bit. It felt like it did, but that's the beauty of it is sometimes the, uh, what is it? The something just before the dawn. What is it? Yeah, it's darkest. Darkest. Just the night is darkest. That's right. Yeah. So you know, you didn't you didn't lose hope. You might have a little bit, but uh, it's still intact. And I don't know what in the world is going on with John Bowl. Why he decommitted like three weeks after committing to Florida. Um, but he's back, back on the market. Yeah. Um, I trying to figure out what exactly went down here is uh, impossible, but the person that tweeted it first was NIL advisor, Chris Wash said, my client, 2024 John Bowl, number 23 in the country, has decommitted from Florida and will reopen his recruitment. So he has an agent like doing his bidding already? Basically. NIL advisor is what they're called. That's wild. Uh, yeah. He um, was most recently at Sunrise Christian in Wichita. And was final five included Missouri, Texas, Michigan, UConn. Overtime Elite. Overtime Elite. That would be... Uh, I don't want... It's too much to try to figure this out. We've heard nothing as far as rumors or speculation that... We don't even know if Mizzou was second place. We know he has talked up playing in the state of Missouri before, but at this point, who knows? You want to make a prediction or a wish? I don't want to make a wish. I don't want to interfere with your... Okay. That's very powerful stuff. Because it's, it's still, yes, ongoing. It is ongoing, and yeah, I, it's something we'll have to just keep watching. Um, clearly, there's some stuff going on probably in the background that we probably don't know about completely, uh, so we'll just see how it shakes out. In other basketball news, the NBA Summer League has started, and Mizzou, well represented in NBA Summer League. Drew Smith, well, let me let me back up a little bit. Kobe Brown, Los Angeles Clippers. Demoy Hodge, LA Lakers. We know about those two. We've talked about them a lot. But some names from the past that are in Summer League, Drew Smith playing for the Heat, Jonte Porter playing for the Bulls, and Mark Smith playing for the Denver Nuggets Summer League team. Didn't expect to see his name out yeah, there. Yeah, that's pretty surprising. Yeah, good for him, though. So they'll be playing each other some. Uh, already, the Heat and Lakers played, and we got to see a highlight slash low light, Mizzou on Mizzou crime, uh, Des Moines Hodge picking the pocket of Drew Smith, taking it the other way for a dunk. And Hodge doing what he does. 
and I saw him make a three. So yeah, I honestly, I've been kind of down on his uh, NBA prospects this whole time. And I feel like he might actually get a two-way contract out of the summer league because if there's anything that intrigues NBA teams, he's a little undersized for the two spot, but a three and D wing, you know, coming off the bench, able to make a three and spark something on defense. I think he could maybe find a spot. Yeah. I might actually have to watch some summer league. Yeah. All right. So what we're really here for is to talk about these new football commits. Um, it's, it's really getting going now. Uh, we had talked about previously how there was only three commits in the class for a really long time. And Missouri was sitting like 85th in the class rankings. Everybody was getting a little nervous, but we had this big recruiting weekend. It was a little under the radar. Who knows what's going to happen with it, but now... It was successful. Yeah, I would say it was successful. We are seeing it. Uh, we are seeing the fruits of that uh, weekend come to pass. Come to fruition. Come, come to bear. Something like that. Um, so sh- what order do you want to try to do this? Um, you read, read them off. Okay. Uh, we'll go in order from highest rated to lowest rated according to 247sports.com. Um, Cameron Keys, cornerback from Florida, a four star player, uh, ranked th- about 300th in the class. And he, right now, with 10 commits, um, is at the top of Missouri's commitment list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most recent one as well. Um, yeah, this is... I feel like I'm, I'm going to be saying this is good news pretty much about all these guys because it's great. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, they apparently decided to dip into Florida and because I think... Aggressively. Like, aggressively, because I think we have like four commits from Florida. Three of them are from like St. Thomas Aquinas mm-hmm. uh, High School, which is just kind of a powerhouse program. Uh in Florida, and a lot of times they'll play like on ESPN and stuff like that. I watched some clips of James Madison uh, playing um, on ESPN. But yes, Cameron Keys is a defensive back. I think he's going to be playing cornerback. Um, but massive pickup for sure. Yeah, four star defensive back. Uh, another four star commitment is you alluded to James Madison. Also, yeah, St. Thomas Aquinas, wide receiver, listed at 6'3", 190, four-star. And um, obviously, we've been following his recruitment for a while because it's been so public, especially him tweeting about it. It was like if he went anywhere else, it was going to be the most shocking thing ever because he's been all Mizzou 100% for like the last month. Mm -hmm. So much that he's actually been recruiting some of his teammates to also come to Mizzou and telling the coaching staff, hey, we've got some guys here that would consider it, so you should probably recruit them. Yeah, James Madison's single-handedly uh, building the pipeline, and I don't know how you tap into something like that. I don't know if you just you just kind of were fortunate to find somebody that has this kind of influence over his peers, but uh, James Madison has been an influencer for sure, and he's a great player uh, in his own right. So um, like I said, I was watching some clips of him playing a big game against uh, another powerhouse program from Pennsylvania. And he was um, for he's a big wide receiver, but was kind of playing in an at least in this game in a way that you might not expect from a guy. Like he wasn't really playing vertical; he was actually running a lot of underneath routes and stuff like that, and was kind of doing some of the dirty work. But mm-hmm. uh, at one at one point, he kind of took a pretty short pass that he caught at a weird angle and ended up just kind of taking it in for a touchdown. So he definitely has the ability to kind of shed tacklers and kind of find find the the space and he looked super physical yeah in some of the highlights i saw for sure so this is this is a huge pickup and you know it came down to mizzou and florida state uh and he's f- obviously lives in florida right now but he's originally from kansas city so that was uh kind of two interesting geographical uh kind of uh, some connections there yeah yeah that seemed i mean that's like uh perfect scenario there yeah you got a kid originally from kansas city yeah and now he's at a powerhouse in florida get him on board bring anybody else that wants to come to uh but this whole all the uh theatrics around his recruitment and obviously his nickname the prez uh then 
great videos, great graphics. I'm assuming somebody at Mizzou is putting all that stuff together for him. And, uh, and that's, that's gotta be fun to be like, Hey, uh, if you, I was imagining like that video, they like made it and was like, if you feel like maybe you want to post this at some point to commit, uh, we made this for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They've been, they've been killing it for sure. Uh, next on my list is Nicholas Rodriguez, linebacker, also from St. Thomas Aquinas, three-star player, listed up 6'1", 190. Yeah, this is um, honestly one of my favorite guys in this group we're going to talk about. I think he has a really high ceiling, uh, a nice frame that kind of long arms that I think he'll be able to grow into and, and be a, a really good outside linebacker in the SEC. And good speed. I think he honestly projects well as kind of a coverage outside linebacker can probably get in space well and uh might intercept a few passes make some big plays like that but um really fast physical kid and um really good prospect for sure one thing i that i was reminded of um with james madison's recruitment is like how him committing and all the theatrics around it is like the culmination of this this part of college football, we've talked about it before, how this recruiting is its own thing more than ever, mm -hmm. where obviously it, it really does culminate with signing day when you actually sign on the dotted line. But then what happens? You basically have to just kind of forget about them for a couple years um, and see who is cracking the depth chart as like a you know, red shirt sophomore or junior in college. Yeah. Because it, it, I don't know, it just feels like almost two separate things. There's it this is. like entire, this like grueling battle to beat out these other programs and get the attention of these high school kids. They commit, they sign, and then the new game happens right. when they get on campus and it have is. to work their way up the depth chart and everything. Yeah, it's fascinating. Um, you know, kind of playing the, the attention game, kind of telling them they're the, the most important thing in the world. And then when they get to school, it's like, all right, you got to earn it now. Yeah. And kind of you're you're a man now, and uh, kind of like just got to figure it out from there. So yeah, it's true. You kind of just forget about them for a year or two, and because a lot of these guys don't make a big impact when they first get to campus. Some of them might, mm -hmm. uh, but we'll uh, we'll see in a couple of years. <laughs> With uh, Nicholas Rodriguez, though, he seems like I'm just gonna put a star next to his name as a guy that I think will climb the rankings a little bit recruiting wise before mm -hmm. signing day. And he, I mean, he specifically uh, mentioned that, you know, Missouri's got a couple linebackers who won't be there next year. Uh, it's a, there's an opportunity there for sure for kind of early playing time. A high school kid paying attention to the depth chart? I know, it's unbelievable. <laughs> um, and it what's really fascinating is he put out like a top five or something like that. Uh, I don't know when this would have happened, but Missouri obviously was not, Missouri was not on it. Mm. Like at whatever time he was putting out a top five, and so Missouri made up a lot of ground quickly, and I'm sure some of that is uh, James Madison doing the work he was doing. Um, I'm going to jump to the other uh, pickup from St. Thomas Aquinas, Justin Bodford, a defensive lineman, three-star player. Uh, any thoughts on him? Yeah, he's, uh, he's uh, 6'1", 290 right now is what he's listed at. So for a defensive tackle in the SEC, uh, that height is a little bit undersized. I don't know that that's, that's like game-breaking or something like that, but uh, I think Jernigan's 6'1". Um, so maybe a little bit undersized, but I'm not really worried about it. Uh, watching his film, he was just really powerful, uh, probably projects as a really solid like run stopper at the next level. Uh, he was still putting pressure on the quarterback and stuff, but um, just looked like, uh, yeah, just your stereotypical, uh, just doing all the dirty work in the trenches and, you know, really good uh, awareness. Like, he, like I sometimes I feel like it would be difficult as a defensive lineman. There's so much going on. Your vision is just blocked by everything going on around you, but they're by so blockers. good. But yeah, exactly. But they're so good at like tracking where the running back is and like, at, you know, like kind of reacting quickly. That was one thing that just stood out to me in his film was he was just tracking the running back really well and just was overpowering everybody in front of him. So a really strong guy, and I think that will supersede the height concerns. Sounds good. And then the last two pickups of the week are both listed as athlete, but we're thinking uh, they'll most likely play safety in college. 
and that is Cam Dooley from Valley High School in Valley, Alabama, and Jackson Hancock from Canton, Georgia. So this entire list is SEC territory. But here we've got two guys, uh, Cam Dooley at 6'4", projected at safety, and then Hancock six foot. So uh, two different uh, different looks at the defensive backfield there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I think that's one thing I really like about some of those defensive players. Sometimes just the, like playing other positions in high school and stuff. I think can uh, can be really good for your development at the next level and kind of your your versatility and all that stuff. But Another play, another player that I uh, I think we might have forgotten to mention is Jude James. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who committed, and he will probably. I, there's been a lot of talk. He's kind of an athlete as well from uh, Francis Howell in uh, in Missouri. So he's an in state guy. One of uh, one of only a few in state commitments that we have right now. But uh, he's a little bit of an under under the radar guy. But he's six four, plays wide receiver and safety in high school. So kind of goes both ways there, which is impressive. But he's a guy that might not play either one of those positions in college. He might he might uh, play tight end. So um, it's interesting that they're just kind of taking these these like plus athletes and then just kind of plugging them into whatever they need them to be or what they're willing to do um, at the college level. Well, I mean, with the struggles that Missouri's had at tight end in recent years, that I'm all for just getting a big wide receiver and yeah. lining him up at tight end. Yeah, honestly, at this point, like. I'm totally fine with kind of moving away from the more like stereotypical tight end recruit because a lot of times those guys end up being kind of slow. Um, maybe they don't have like the the receiving chops that we need. And there's a place for blocking tight ends for sure. And that's yeah. that's valuable. But well, and that's the way the NFL is headed, right? Is more like yeah. specialized with for blocking sure. tight ends and receiving tight ends. Exactly. And so I think I think that's a great move to kind of look for a bigger wide receiver. Honestly, like Toski Dove was kind of an c- kind of an interesting build, like that kind of a bigger wide receiver who didn't quite have the speed that maybe other guys do. But uh, Jude James probably isn't a burner, but um, is still very big, athletic uh, guy who can who can catch really well. So I would be interested to see him play tight end at Mizzou. Yeah, definitely. Uh, one thing with Cam Dooley, I don't, you alluded to. Uh, guys playing multiple positions but he's playing quarterback in high school right now and so if you've been listening to the podcast for very long you know we do a seven on seven draft before every season so i'm making a mental note (laughs) it's gonna be a darling like seven on seven pick someday whoever uh, in like three years whoever gets the first pick is probably gonna take cam dooley as their (laughs) just because he safety slash yeah quarterback he can play both offense and defense and i feel like that's usually what we're i feel like most times when we're making our defensive lineup, we're putting the quarterback at linebacker or safety. Yep. It's a, a place where they're not going to be one-on-one very much. Yeah. Um, so, so we went from like three commits to 10. Yeah. Since the last time we met. Yeah. Last week. Mm-hmm. So this is a pretty impressive little haul here. And, uh, you know, we were hearing a lot of rumblings and stuff that the visits went really well. That there was going to be some action coming up, and I still think there's going to be a little bit more. Uh, we got a couple more guys that are announcing in the next week. We've uh, got Johan Cardenas is a running back that's announcing tomorrow. What's today? The fifth. Today's the fifth. He's on the seventh. On the seventh, yeah. um, he's announcing between Missouri and Vanderbilt. He has a couple like twenty four seven crystal balls to Vanderbilt. So you know, I don't. I'm not sure exactly what will happen there. Um, won't be really surprised to see you go either way. And then we've got Brian Huff, who is a linebacker from Arkansas that we've talked about the last couple of weeks. He's going to be committing on July the 12th. So and he got a crystal ball to Mizzou yep. from uh, Arkansas Insider, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Love to see that. Yeah, there's been some momentum in Missouri's favor for sure on Brian Huff, which would be awesome. Huff's four-star, I know, is... Uh, are they both four-star? I, I don't know. Th- I think Cardenas is three. Okay, that sounds right. Um, so... Of these new commits, two of them are four-star recruits, according to all the uh, recruiting websites. And I did want to point out, I thought this tweet from uh, the Power Mizzou Twitter account was really interesting. We've done some of this kind of looking at the recruiting classes and how they stack up recently, but uh, they were looking at the number of four and five stars signed by each SEC school from 2021 to 2023. 
And one thing that was really interesting that I wanted to point out was uh, one of their tweets is, in the last three classes, Mizzou has signed 17 four- or five-star players. And in SEC games, Missouri is 8-2 and two against teams with fewer four- and five-star signees in that time frame. They are 3-13 and 13 against teams with more four- and five-star signees in that time frame. So you're telling me recruiting is important? It sure seems like it. And I'm wondering if the recruiting websites, and I mean, this has probably been true. It's probably been trending in this direction for a little while now. But my speculation is that the recruiting services are getting a little bit better at especially maybe like drawing the line between three and four star guys uh, just with more information being available yeah. on the internet, more video of recruits every day yeah. than ever before. Yeah. And just, um, you know, we talk about kind of the difference between hitting on individual recruits and hitting on whole classes. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, when you are a program that's bringing in like 10 or more four and five star players, you're not going to hit on all of them, but just you're giving yourself so many more possibilities. Just the probability of you you know, hitting on a lot of them is, is so much better than, you know, Missouri bringing in three or four of those kind of players and just hoping they all hit. Cause that's basically what happens is obviously we're just assuming these are the best prospects we have. They're going to work out. They, that's obviously not how it goes usually mm -hmm. at all. Um, and so, but whenever you're hitting on your, whenever your whole class is made up of the, of the, that caliber of player, then that's when it obviously makes a huge difference. And that's what's happening at the top of college football for sure. Yeah, it was just uh, pretty insane to see it that black and white in the win and loss column there. Yep. Makes a difference. Um, I had something else about the class as a whole. That Go is ahead. interesting, though, that uh, you know, to, to bring up that maybe some of these services are getting better. There's a lot of demand for recruiting stuff. Like fans love recruiting, we love to follow it. Mm. And um, it's some of those diehards to follow when it's, you know, in the off season or whatever. And it's the future of your program. It's fun to see those guys kind of, you know, grow up in the program and start making a difference actually on the field. And to know that you kind of follow their story from the very beginning is kind of rewarding. So uh, a lot of fans love that. And there's just a massive market for it. There's new services that have popped up and stuff. And yeah, I think there's enough competition in the industry to where they're, they got to take it seriously. And in the early days, you know, I think that there was uh, some degree they were ranking players on maybe their potential and kind of just you know on their measurables and stuff like that but i think that they've gotten better at really honing in what kind of a formula that they're using and we've joked about in the past how sometimes the recruiting services do seem a little bit reactionary in that they are sometimes potentially reacting to an offer that right. comes through or oh uh, this player it's now confirmed that they were a take at georgia yeah so uh maybe we well, let's they just committed to Georgia and Georgia really wanted them and we had them as a three star. Maybe let's re look at that and see if we were missing something there. Exactly. So how that that makes a, it all that very will fuzzy. Always be a thing that yep. happens, I think. So uh, yeah, that makes it hard to figure out exactly what's going on sometimes on the rankings. Yeah. But well, that even happens with Mizzou stuff too. Like they they'll pick up a kind of under the radar guy and like rivals or twenty four seven maybe not even have a ranking for him and then we're like oh okay random guy that missouri just picked up okay mm -hmm. let's take a little closer look oh yeah it looks like a classic three star let's exactly. slap that on there yeah or you have a situation where uh in basketball dewan harris is like the fifth highest rated player in the state and then uh goes to kansas and immediately shoots to the top of the list That's... and was actually good <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um one thing that is uh is nice when every time Missouri signs or gets a commit from a four-star player, we get to see tweets pointing out, as we pointed out on this show before, uh, the number of four-star players committing to Mizzou has never been as high as it is right now. Eli Drinkwood's tenure so far has seen like three times the number of four and five-star commits than all of Mizzou football in in uh, since these recruiting services have been around pretty much. And I saw somebody mention that 
before Drinkwitz took over, Missouri had signed like four four-star players or something in the last 10 years. I can't remember the, the stat exactly, but they were pointing out this upcoming season, there's going to be six four-star players just in the wide receiver room. Yeah, that's awesome. So that kind of thing, I never get tired of seeing that. Mm -hmm. And it's worth pointing out, honestly, over and over again. Um, unfortunately, it, none of that matters. We all know none of that matters if Missouri goes out and only wins six games again this year. Yep. We're looking ahead a little bit too much, but it could uh, could all come crashing down if, uh, if they're not able to turn them into wins. Mm hmm but right now, so last week we were joking only three commits and they were in like 85th in the class rankings. Now at 10 commits, they're sitting at 59th on 24 seven composite. And I saw, I think it was power Mizzou tweeted that if you sort of extrapolated this class out to a full signing class, it would rank about 35th. So yeah. we're right you on track. With it. We're right on track for kind of a normal, if not slightly disappointing uh class ranking compared to due to these very arbitrary nebulous rankings yeah yeah and we're we're still sitting here comparing to uh you know a couple years under Drinkwitz that are the best in the history of mizzou football for so sure it's nice to be comparing that but comparison kyle is the thief of joy don't forget that wow that came out of nowhere and <laughs> was very good to know like <laughs> Keep that in mind. Uh, there was one other person I wanted to and wanted to say is announcing soon, and that is Cole McConathy, mm -hmm. defensive end from Alabama, I think. And he is announcing tomorrow, which will be probably today for most of you that's listening to this. Mm -hmm. uh, so on the 6th, July 6th, and probably coming down to Missouri in, in Louisville. Mm -hmm. And don't really have a great feeling for what's going to happen there. I think, I think Missouri legitimately wants him, so... Uh, we'll see if we get some good news on that. And I forget if you said, but on, uh, um, I, how do you pronounce his name? Cardenas? Uh, is it, are we thinking that he probably picks Vanderbilt? I, th I, if I had to guess, I think he, I think it is Vanderbilt. Okay. And so, of course, that is, makes you then wonder if he's a take and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, Vanderbilt's still SEC. Yeah. But he has visited both of those places. And that seems to be kind of all, all the crystal balls are distributed there for sure. Gotcha. Um, okay. How long have we been going, Producer Cameron? Uh, um, like 35, 35 minutes. Uh, Kyle, we got, Cameron and I got to see something special a couple nights ago. Listener, we got to see something special. We got to see Kyle <laughs> performing an athletic feat. We watched him play men's slow pitch softball. <laughs> And it was a treat, first of all. Do you have a stat line? I uh, this I'm not I was not the official scorer, but I was keeping my score in my scorer's book. I had Kyle three for four with three singles. Yeah, I was playing a little yeah. small ball the other night. Yeah, well, just station to station. Yeah. Manufacture some runs. Mm -hmm. Uh three for four with three singles, like six or seven putouts at first base, no errors. One play that was a little iffy, but the pitcher wasn't covering anyway, so I can't put that on you. You know the play I'm talking about. <laughs> I do. Um, and probably and, could have filled it a little cleaner. Yeah, but I you, nobody was getting him out. It was a right-handed batter. I wasn't really expecting the ball to come yeah. to me. I'm gonna be he, honest. He was late on it, trying yeah, to go the other way. He really was. He was targeting me. Uh, but you guys destroyed the other team, like fifteen to three or something yeah, like that. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't one of the more competitive games we've had this season. But uh, is your it, team a juggernaut? It, it, we're we did win the first little section, so you know we're, we kind of have a target on our back. We, you know, we're is there a playoff we're, system to this? League? We're kind of the team to be in that that little complex. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, I think they there's, just just I think a there's like a spring, champion. a summer, and a fall section, and we won the spring one and the summer one right now. So. Oof. They did a little rebalancing after the spring, you know, brought up some teams that okay. were good and so relegated some. Yep. Okay. Yep. Wow. Yeah, I've been, I've been playing softball for probably over 10 years. I don't know, maybe since I was in high school. It's kind of fun. Have you ever hit one over the fence? I have. Oof. A few times. Man. Yeah. Dang. I don't I don't I, have, I, don't, I don't know if I could still do it. It's been a couple of years. I think the last time I did it was maybe 2 or 3 years ago. I tried to play co-ed softball slow pitch one time and I'm okay. 
I played baseball growing up, but hitting a softball, it literally feels like I'm swing. I'm hitting the ball with a pool noodle. Yeah. It's, it's so dead. It, I mean, it's not difficult really to do in the grand scheme of things, yeah, but it's like, <laughs> but at the, at the same time, it is really, it's kind of a learning curve. Like, especially if you played baseball or even like tennis or something, it's just a totally different swing. Yeah. And it, it takes a little bit of, it takes a little practice. I'm not, I won't lie. You gotta, you gotta get down that timing. It feels like you're just waiting on the ball forever. Yes. You just that was my really, problem. You gotta be really patient. And honestly, the most impressed I was when was when you there was a throw home by the other team that was a little unnecessary. They were never going to get this guy out at home, and you took third with some heads up base running. And that's the kind in of in a stuff, game we were like already winning by like ten runs, probably. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> that's the kind of stuff you got to do. That's I, how you win, man. You don't want to be complacent. That's if true. you don't do it in the blowout, you'll forget in a close game. That's and exactly that could cost right. you the game. That's exactly right. So. Uh, we were impressed. Yeah, I'm glad you guys came out. It was kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, if there was a championship game or a playoff game, we might like live stream it or something. But <laughs> <laughs> lucky for you, that doesn't exist. Yeah, that's probably good. <laughs> um, anything else for the folks? I don't think so. We'll be talking about a couple of guys. Well, actually, we're going to be back here in a couple of days to pre-record, so we might have a little bit of news next time. But maybe John Bull will commit somewhere again. <laughs> John Bull. All right. That's all I got. Uh, where's my script? Special thank you to our Patreon supporters at the $10 level and above. Britt Treese, Brian Smith, Ryan D. Moore, Tristan, Ben Smith, Parker, Daddy JD, Tim Keens, Tyler Harsel, Brandon Groffalo, Brandon Hanks, and Matthew Tilly. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. You can find this podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We're on Twitter at Missouri Sports Pod, and you can email us at Missouri Sports Pod at gmail.com. You can find our t shirts and stickers on our online shop, Missouri Sports Pod at BigCartel.com. Thank you, everyone, for listening. We will see you in a couple days, uh, next week. Bye.